Now, high ticket offers is something that a lot of people find super, super interesting because you make a lot of money, yeah? Getting a customer is hard. We all know it's hard. And with the increasing cost of advertising, it's definitely more expensive to get customers. And this is the reason why you wanna learn how to sell high ticket offers. Let's get into the episode and learn the strategies so that you can definitely close more high ticket deals. First thing you wanna do is strategy number one, know your ideal customer's pain. It is important for you to know what your ideal client's pain is. Once you know that pain, then it's easy to ask yourself if you can truly deliver on the game. Remember the first thing, people buy out of pain or buy into gain. Second thing that you wanna do is you wanna use this metrics to craft a high value offer. You need to make an irresistible offer and the only way that you can do that is to save them time, energy, or money. The information that you're selling, the product that you're selling, the service that you're selling, would it save me time? Would it save me from putting in the work? And when I mean putting in the work, I'm talking about the amount of effort physical muscular effort that I have to put into it. There's a friend of mine who uh, was telling me about a brother of his that got out of jail and he was telling me that the brother couldn't get a job. And I asked him, I said, could the brother move around? And he said, yes. I said, does he have functional limbs? He said, yes. I said, so why can't he get a job? And he said, well, nobody was going to employ him. I said, but uh, it still doesn't make sense to me. And he was wondering why I said that. I said that because of this. I say, you know, tell your brother that if he can create some sort of value, somebody was going to exchange, you know, that value that he was providing with money. It's as simple as that. I said, is he helping somebody save time? What value is he bringing to the market space? Is he helping somebody save energy? Is he helping somebody save money? If you tell somebody I'm going to mow your lawn, you're going to save them the energy that they need to apply to have a very clean lawn then you're saving them energy. The bigger the problem, the bigger the time, the bigger the energy, and the bigger the money that you save, the more that you can charge. Which brings me to the third thing, which is pre-address their objections. It's one of the reasons why people buy your services, because you can help them get to a destination. That means your client is here, and they need to get here, and they're trusting that you can take them through this path. The only way you can take them through that path is to share your story, Let them know that you've been down here before so you understand what they feel, how they feel, and you also understand what it is to be on the other side of town. If you can communicate this, understanding each level what their objections or frustrations could be, that means in one presentation you can sell them that and say I have the solution from that. And what they hear when you do that presentation, be the call, be the questions, be the webinar or challenge or whatever, is they're saying, hmm. This guy has really thought about everything that I want to ask him that I just want to take out my wallet right now and give it to you because you totally understand what I'm going through, the pain that I'm going through. I feel like you know me already. The next thing, position yourself as an authority by sharing value for free. People see this as um, it could be a problem telling everybody everything that I'm doing. Why would they want to do business with me? If you already add so much value in people's lives, why would they not want to do business with you? When you're adding values, there's nothing I'm going to teach you in this 15 minutes video or 10 minutes video right now that will make you solve all your problems. So naturally, because I'm telling you the strategies that you need to apply, when you want to apply the strategy, what are you going to go to ordinarily? You're going to go to the guy who understands you and understands what you're going through, a guy who's walking the walk and a guy who's talking the talk. So it's important that you have a book out there to gain the authority because that's your best business card. When you show up to a speaking event or you show up in a networking event and somebody says, oh, what's your number? You're like, I got something better for you. You know what? You give them a value. You're like, oh, you got a book? And they look at you. Wow. Not only do you leave an impression or something that you created prior to when you even met them. Now they can walk away, get to see that value, add that value, get a small win from whatever information you share like I'm doing to you right now. And if the win works out for them, they're like, "Mm, I want more, thirsty for more. So one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot close high ticket sales is because people just don't know you as an authority and they don't know what you stand for and they don't trust you. They gotta know, like, and trust you. And the best way to do this is to have 
a lot of valuable content out there. You're out there, you know, just planting all your nets and traps, you know, for people who definitely have the kind of problems, you know, that you're talking about that you got a solution for. And naturally those traps is gonna bring them to you as leads. And that's how you vibe to your tribe. The internet has a lot of noise making. It has a lot of gurus mentioning a lot of stuff. People feel like they can Google every stuff, but you gotta separate yourself. And that's why you wanna give more than 100% of anything that you teach. Now, you gotta let them always apply with you to ensure that they're good fit. If you miss the step, what you're doing, you're just taking somebody who probably heard something about you, think they have that kind of problem and just jump into your funnel. Set the stage so you can best understand if you can best serve them. If you cannot serve them, then you definitely don't want to give them any offer. You just want to point them in the right direction so you can keep them going. Make your sales calls more about questions. It's pretty close to the last point. You listen and you always check back to see if you're on the right page with them. If you're not, you definitely don't want to make no offer. If you learn to do this, hold back and stop this whole trying to sell yourself, especially those of you who love to gossip. They ask you, uh, what about this guy? And the first thing you say is how bad they are and all that. You're creating an impression with a total stranger, somebody who doesn't know much about you. The person is meeting you for the first time. They asked you about another service. Believe it or not, what you just did was you just let them associate you with gossip or negativity and you don't want to do that. So when they ask you questions about another business, you go, well, what is it that they're looking for? Are they just shopping around or they really are ready to move on with whatever you have to offer because you like to know what their intentions are. Shift the conversation from trying to gossip away from what the question was and you're also not seeing an opportunity to jump in and start selling all your features and function, knowing fully well that they're not satisfied with where they're coming from. You always want to take them towards their dream. You always want to take them towards the experience they're going to have. So you don't want to be in that logical space trying to see who's better. You want to be in an emotional place where you constantly don't shift the conversation in their head and have a clear intention with where you're going. And the only way you can truly help them is if you truly know what they need. I want you, if you haven't, to go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now just so I know that you love the value that I'm giving. And if you have any comment or whatever you wanna share with me, questions or anything, put it down in the comment below. Okay, now let's get to the last point. And it has to do with you giving an awesome experience after you take their money. Apple packaging is so good that everybody who has an Apple product always wanna keep the boxes. You know a lot of things that you buy, the first thing you do is once you unbox them, take out the boxes and you throw it away. But with Apple product, you don't wanna do that because they wowed you. You don't wanna sell them features, you don't wanna sell them functions. You wanna sell them a dream. You wanna sell them experience. People can emotionally connect with the experience they're gonna have when they exchange the value that you're giving them for money. A good offer has to be stateable, it has to be relatable, and it has to be desirable. So you always wanna sell them an experience in one statement. So when they ask you a question, so what am I gonna get working with you? Just give them the experience. Like I said, this is where your sales start from. This is how you recruit soldiers and pawns, turning your buyers, your clients, to marketers for your product, and that's how you get a lot of referrals coming your way. Whatever you have to offer, you gotta be willing and ready to wow them with experience. Until I see you next time, I hope you can take these strategies and go put in your business right now and go make that win. Thank you.